Hello, Tanya Laird here, and welcome to part two of lecture 14 of ENGR 231 Engineering Statics. In this portion of the lecture, I just want to work through some basic examples of applying the uh, formulas to find uh, the centroid of areas by integration. So as a review, let's consider some basic formulas. Uh, we have our first moment of area formulas. And of course, this is for two-dimensional uh, figures. Our first moment of area, we have Qx, which of course is the first moment of area with respect to the x-axis. And this measures how much of the area is how far from the x-axis. And that is, the e that is equal to the integral of y dA. And that's going to be so associated with a uh, horizontal, uh, basically, uh, differential element. And then Qy is the first moment of area with respect to the y-axis, and that is the integral of x dA. And that represents how much area is how far from the y-axis. And then we have our centroid formulas. The x-bar is going to be equal to uh, simply qx, or sorry, qy, because we're interested in how far we are from the y-axis, which is basically the x-bar the x-coordinate of the centroid, that is equal to qy over a, the actual area of the shape, and y-bar is going to be equal to qx divided by a. Uh, measuring how much area is how far from the x-axis, and then dividing by the total area. Again, this is really nothing more than an integration way of doing a weighted average. Okay, so I want to work with a few basic uh, examples first. And I think I'm going to start with the most trivial example I can think of, and that is the centroid of a rectangle. So the trivial example, just to demonstrate how these formulas actually work before we get into anything with any kind of complex integration, a trivial example is the centroid of a rectangle. So let's consider something like this, the centroid of a rectangle. Now, we know off the bat that or if I were to define a rectangle like this, with a, let's say it has a, a height A, or maybe a width A and a height B. Or actually, to be consistent with what I'm going to use later when it's moments of inertia, a width B and a height H. So a width B and then a height H. Well. I know because this is a rectangle, this is, you know, trivially simple, this is very intuitive, the centroid of a rectangle, or the center of mass of a rectangle, is going to be right at the center, and that would have coordinates of, well, essentially, I could say that this has coordinates of, in the x, uh, b over 2, and in the y, h over 2. Very simple. So what I want to do is, I want to develop this, uh, the equations for this, or I want to work through the equations of centroids to get this based on, uh, or basically from base principles. So. This uh, is going to be very useful because this is one that I can, this is a centroid that I can get just really from uh, basic intuition. And if I, uh, if, I sh if I work through this, this is a very simple way of showing how to work through the equations of uh, first moment of area, centroids, etc. So uh, let's see here. First, let's get the, uh, I think we'll start with something that I would have, uh, let's start with something that has coordinates in the x or will, or will be a integration with the x variable. So let's find the uh, x coordinate of the centroid. The x coordinate of the centroid. And to use and, and to find this, we are going to use the qy, the uh, first moment of area with respect to the y axis. And we know that qy is equal to the integral of x dA. And what, is, and what this means, of course, is that if you have some generic shape, you're going to have some differential element dA, and it's going to have a, we'll multiply that times an x, a distance x. Now, for this particular function, or for this particular shape, I should say, our dA is going to be relatively simple. Our dA, first it will have a width of dx, at least for this thing here, for the qy, and it will have a height of simply h. So uh, our dA then is going to be the area of this differential element, and dA then will equal dx times h. 
uh, dx times h. So then, this is the integral of uh, x dA, which is the integral of x times dx uh, times the height h. Uh, now, because h is not going to change over my cross section, actually, I can actually pull that out of the integration. It's a constant integration. So maybe I'll just put a little bar on that or a little boundary on that. So that's going to be uh, h times the integral of x dA, or sorry, integral of x dx. And that would be, uh, oh, also very important. When we do this, we need to set bounds of integration. Uh, the, bound, the coordinate of this point here, uh, the bottom right corner, would be b comma zero, and the coordinate of this corner up here would be zero comma h. So these will be our bounds of integration. And so the bounds of integration for our problem here, uh, at least when we're, doing, when we're doing an integral in the x direction, that's gonna be from zero to b. Zero to b here. And that would then transfer through, so that would be zero to b. And then this would be, if I uh, take the integration of this, of the indefinite integral, well actually the definite integral, that would be x squared over two evaluated from zero to b. x squared over two evaluated from zero to b. Uh, however then, if I work through that integration, this would be h times uh, b squared over two uh, minus zero, or zero squared over two, which is of course just zero, and then that would be uh, hb squared over 2. Now that's obviously not the uh, area of the, or that's obviously not the coordinates of the centroid, but uh, this is actually fairly straightforward from here. Um, so we got the qy, and then we remember that x bar is equal to uh, qy uh, divided by uh, qy divided by the area. And the area of a rectangle is very simple. That's just b times h. So this is uh, hb squared divided by 2 divided by b times h. So b cancels out, the square cancels out, the h cancels out, and the h cancels out. And I am left with b over 2 for the x-coordinate of the centroid, which makes, uh, which is exactly what we expected. Uh, this is, again, a very intuitive problem, or a very, or if the math itself is not very intuitive, at least the... Uh, the final answer is very intuitive. A rectangle, we know the center of mass, or the center of a rectangle should lie right at the center of that rectangle. Then I can do the same thing in the y. So I need, if I want the y coordinate in the centroid, y bar is equal to qx divided by a. And I have this rectangle here. And let's see. So it's going to have a again, a uh, width b and a height h, and but for the y, our the relative coordinate will be 0 comma h, but the equation will basically be x uh, equals b uh, for this, or more importantly, I would be looking at a differential element that this time is horizontal. My differential element this time is horizontal, so here, I'm basically going to be looking at various differential elements moving from 0 to h, and with a distance of y this time for each of them. Because qx, fundamentally, again, the first moment of area with respect to the x-axis measures the amount and distance of area, or the, uh, the amount of area you have how far from the x-axis, and that is equal to the integral of y dA. The integral of y dA, and the dA here, we have a dy, uh, and then a with b. So dA, is equal then uh, to b times dy is equal to b times dy and so then this would be equal to the integral of y times bda or sorry not bda bdy and the bounds of integration for this would be the bounds in the uh, in the y direction and that would be from 0 to h uh, from 0 to h which and, the, and of course the integration will be very simple here first I can or very similar to the previous one First, I can pull out a b because that is a constant integration. Uh, the width of the width of b does not change as we move up and down this uh, up and down the shape here. And then zero to h of y dy, and then it's going to come to uh, b times y squared over two evaluated from zero to h, and we you would end up with um, b h squared divided by two. So again, very similar to last time. 
So that's our, that it, again is our QX, the first moment of area with respect to the X axis. And then the Y bar, the Y coordinate of the centroid would be equal to QX divided by A. QX divided by A. Uh, so the air, and then the area formula is just gonna be the same as previous, just B times H. Now, for this rectangle, I uh, just went ahead and uh, use the formula for what we already know for the area of rectangles B times H. If you have more complex shapes, like a uh, uh, just a random curve or something like that that you were given the function for, you might actually have to, you might want to go and, um, you would have to go and solve for the area by integration. But again, for this particular one, it's just a rectangle, and I, of course, know the, the area of rectangle is just the length times the width or the base times the height. And so then QX here, if I divide this, this is BH squared divided by B times H, uh, oh, of course, bh squared over 2, can't forget that. bh squared over 2 divided by b times h. So b and b cancel out, and the squared and the h cancel out, and I am left with h over 2. So then, uh, finally, my x bar comma y bar, the actual coordinates of my centroid will be b over 2, what we got previously, comma h over 2, exactly what we would expect for the centroid of a rectangle. Okay, so there's that. So the next example I'd like to look at is applying these formulas to uh, something that we've something that's a little less something that is a little less intuitive, but is something that I've looked at quite frequently in this class, and that is the centroid of a triangle. So consider the centroid of a triangle. Uh, maybe you just uh, find the centroid of a triangle, or the coordinates of the centroid of a triangle. Or maybe I should even say the centroid of a right triangle. And I focus on right triangles because basically any uh, triangle, right or non-right, can at least be, can always be broken down into a, a series of right triangles. And we'll use, and if you have, and if you need to, even if you don't know the formula for a more complex or obtuse triangle or something like that, you can break down uh, a more complex triangle or a non-right triangle into a series of right triangles and using the formulas that we'll see later on in lecture uh, 15, I suppose, for um, centroids of composite areas, you can find the centroid quite easily. Uh, find the coordinates of the centroid of a right triangle. And again, I'm going to do this as kind of a derivation, uh, looking at how to find uh, the formulas that we've been using. So as a review, We've been using the following formula when we've discussed uh, equivalent forces, uh, equivalent point forces of distributed uh, loads. If you have a triangle, if you have a triangle, let's say a center of mass, well, this is what we're looking for essentially. If you have a right triangle, uh, the formula we have used is that if you have a triangle that is a width B and a height and a height H, we have made a point of saying, or we have said, that the centroid, the coordinates of the centroid, are at h over 3 and b over 3. In other words, the centroid is one-third, or the coordinates of the centroid are one-third of the distance from any base. Um, let's see, and then uh, b over 3 here. So what I would like to do is derive this formula. So uh, I want to end up with an h over 3 and a b over 3. So let's work in the x direction first. So in order to get the coordinate of the, the x coordinate of the centroid, I first need to get the qy, the uh, again, the first moment of area with respect to the y axis. So um, first of all, I want uh, I need to come up with an equation for this. I need to come up with an equation uh, that I can actually integrate. So I'm going to have a triangle that will, be, that will be positioned directly on the origin with the right angle right at the origin. And uh, the only reason for doing this is that this makes the, uh, the math a lot easier to derive. There are very simple formulas for moving a centroid left, or moving the formula for a centroid left and right for a composite shape. And again, we'll see that for in lecture 15. So this would have coordinates. Uh, let's see, uh, b comma zero and zero comma h. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna get the uh, actual equation for this line. Now, I know it's a linear equation, so I know this is going to take the form y equals mx plus b, uh, y equals mx plus b, and then m, let's see, I can just use the formulas rise over run, so that would be uh, negative h over b. As we go from here to here, we drop uh, in, in, run, in rise 
uh, basically negative h, and we increase in run or increase in x by b. So the slope of this line is just negative h over b. So we have y equals uh, negative h over b. And then I just need to put in a known coordinate to get the b. Well, although, mm, you know what, let me put a k here. So I don't have two b's in there, just some constant. And I just know, well, I know for a fact that that's always the uh, the y-intercept of an equation, of a linear equation. So that's just going to be h. So this would be negative h over b, x plus h. And that would be the equation of this line here. Uh, y equals negative h over b, x plus h. y equals negative h over b, x plus h. So uh, then I want to consider my differential element. And since we're doing a qy, we remember that qy is equal to the integral of x dA. And since we have an x here, I know that I want my differential element to also have a dx. And then the height of this differential element here is just going to be equal to the y here, this uh, negative h over bx plus h. This negative h over bx plus h. So therefore, dA is equal to just length times width, or base times height for this rectangle. Uh, so that will be negative h over bx plus h times dx. So now our formula is the integral of x dA, x uh, times, I'll give myself a little more room there for the bounds, x times negative h over b, uh, x plus h dx, and the bounds of integration, because we're doing it in the x direction, this would be from 0 to b. Now, uh, if I can, I always like to pull out constants of integration, and I see that this term here and this term here I have an h, so I can just go ahead and pull that out of my integral again, because the, a, the h is a constant of the shape. It's not going to change as we integrate across it. So that's h times the integral from 0 to b of x times uh, negative, or I can just treat this as, I guess, uh, 1 minus, uh, that would be x over b. I just uh, in basically move this around and we pull out an h. Let's see, negative x over b, and then uh, 1, dx of course, and then I can distribute the x, I can distribute the x there. So that would be h times the integral from 0 to b. Gotta be careful my b's are looking like h's. <laughs> the integral from 0 to b of x minus x squared over b. And about, and again, dx. So going from here to here, we still have that h, and then times uh, x squared over 2 uh, minus, that would be uh, x squared divided by 3b. And this would still be evaluated from 0 to b. Oh, not x squared, sorry, x cubed. I need to remember my calculus. Maybe I just need to go back and take some calculus classes, or maybe I actually need to go on and uh, look through some of the YouTube videos and review some uh, YouTube videos of my own and review some calculus. So we have x cubed over 3b, and this evaluated from uh, 0 to b. I'm sorry if my h's look a little like b's, my b's look a little like h's. So um, then, what would we have here? We would have h times uh, b squared, again, with the the zero case is not important because this would basically collapse to zero, so effectively we were doing this substitute in there and then minus zero, so we can ignore the zero subtraction or the subtraction case, the lower bound, if I could, the basically the lower bound. We can, ignore, we can ignore the lower bound. So this is then b squared divided by two minus uh, b cubed divided by three. And then if I do a common denominator on this, this is h times 3b squared divided by 6 minus 2b, uh, t minus, oh, I lost a b. Gotta check that math. Always losing things. Uh, 2b cubed divided by uh, uh, 6b. Um, Again, all I did was con convert this to a common denominator uh, of 6. And I believe that works out. Uh, 2 sixths is a third, and 3 over 6 is 1 half. And so then, 3 minus 2, uh, this would be h 
times uh, simply uh, and then b and the b uh, cubed would cancel out leaving a b squared and so this would simply be uh, b squared divided by 6 or I could say the entire uh, q uh, qy the first moment of area with respect to y is just hb squared divided by 6. The entire qy is hb squared divided by 6. Now the area, I could derive the area relatively simply, that's just, that would simply be just be the area under this curve, although actually it's simple enough, why not, let's just go ahead and do that. You've always heard that the area of a triangle is um, one half base times height, but you know what, just in case every geometry teacher that I've ever, uh, and, and, and in case every math class I've ever taken has been lying to me, let's go ahead and prove that the area of a triangle is one half base times height. So the area of this thing, we could actually use the exact same, uh, the exact same dx. So that would be in, that would simply be the integral of da uh, from zero to b, and we can literally just use the same da there. So that would be the integral of uh, zero to b of again uh, that would be negative h over bx plus h negative h over bx plus h. Uh, dx, and we can pull out, and we can of course pull an h out. So we'd have h times the integral of, from of, from zero to b of um, just one minus x over b dx, and then we would have let's see that would be h times x minus uh, that would be x squared, or sorry uh, yeah x minus x squared over b over two b. And this then evaluated from 0 to b, uh, which would then come to h times b minus b squared divided by 2b. Let me, put a, let me put a bracket here. And so that would, the b and the b squared would cancel out, just leaving a b. And so we'd basically be, end up with just a, a h times b minus b over 2. And then that would just end up with hb over 2, or bh over 2, basically 1 half base times height. So we know that qy, the first moment of error with respect to y, again, is hb squared over 6. And we know the area, which is just 1, is one half base times height, is 1 half base times height, or bh over 2 using the variables we've been looking at, or that we've been using. And so x bar then, is just qy divided by the area, qy over a, which equals bh squared divided by bh over 2. Or I can multiply the, I can multiply by the reciprocal. Um, oh, actually, I lost my 6 there, so it helps if I uh, copy things correctly. Divided by bh over 2. So I can multiply by the reciprocal, and that would be bh squared over 6 times 2 over bh. So the 2 would go away and that would become a 3, the b would cancel out, and the b would cancel out, and the, um, hmm, something's not quite right here. And that would end up with h and h saying x bar is h over 3. Hmm, that's not quite right. That's definitely not quite right. Oh, simple transcription error, that will do it. I was, I was adding my own sanity there for a second. It uh, qy is not hb squared over six; it is bh squared over six. One of those things. Bh squared over six, or sorry, hb squared over six. Hb squared over six. So hb squared over six. Sorry about that. Times. 2 over bh, so my h cancels out and my h cancels out, my 2 cancels out and leaves a 3 behind, uh, my b cancels out and leaves just a b, and I am left with finally an x bar just equal to b over 3, which is exactly what we'd expect for the centroid of a triangle to be exactly one third from the base. Then we can do the exact same thing or a very similar thing when looking at the, um, when looking at the y coordinate of the centroid, so let's go ahead and work through that. So, or maybe let's do this on the, next, on the next slide. Qx, the first moment of area with respect to the x-axis, 
is going to be integral is going to be equal to the integral of y times dA. Now, like a lot of these, the hard part is going to be determining the uh, the area or not the area the dA the dA the uh, area for a particular integration. And since this involves a y, I need a differential element that is horizontal. And in turn, I need one that has a dy rather than a dx. Now, as we found previously, this equation uh, for the at least solved for y is y equals negative h over bx plus h. So what I want to do is I want to solve that in terms of x. So relatively straightforward, y equals negative h over bx plus h. Which means, uh, let's see, uh, that would be, oh, if I can, if I bring this over here, uh, minus that, and so I can say h minus y equals uh, h over bx, just h over bx, because if I subtract uh, h from both sides and multiply by negative 1, that's what I'll get. Um, and then, just like, let me make sure I had that right previously, h over bx, yep. And then, if I can say that x x is equal to uh, b over h times h minus y. Or simply uh, b, if I multiply this over, this would be b minus uh, bh divided by y. bh divided by y. Um, or sorry, b y over h. That h needs to be in the denominator. Uh, b y over h. So then, if I have my differential element, at any given y, we'll have a, a height of dy and a width equal to b minus by divided by h. b minus by divided by h. Uh, so dA then, the actual area of my differential element is equal to the base times the height or the length times the width. And this would then be uh, b minus by over h Uh, b minus by over h times dy. So then the first moment of area with respect to the x-axis, what I call qx, and your textbook may use a slightly different uh, variable for these, of course, uh, is going to be the integral of y times dA, which is then going to be equal to uh, the integral of y times b minus by over h times dy. And if I pull out a b, that's going to be equal to b times, um, that would be y times 1 minus y over h, and then times dy, which would of course be equal to b times uh, y minus y squared over h uh, dy. Now I probably should put in some bounds of integration, and this would be from 0 to h, so this would be from 0 to h, and 0 to h, and 0 to h. y squared minus y squared over h. Then working through that integral here, moving this over here to try to squeeze this. I'm trying to squeeze this onto one slide if I can. That is going to be b uh, times y squared over 2 minus y cubed over 3h. y cubed divided by 3h. And then this evaluated from 0 to h. And just like last time, the zero is not going to uh, be any consideration, so it's basically just whatever this is minus zero, because both of the there are no constant terms in here. And so then this is b times h squared over 2 minus h cubed divided by 3h. And as we saw last time, this would just uh, collapse, uh, basically just collapse uh, very simply to b h squared divided by 6 using very simple logic. Just very or very simple uh, cancellation, etc. Combining like terms, not only combining like terms, more a common denominator. This would come to bh squared divided by six, and that is equal to qx. That's qx here, and then finally, y bar is equal to then uh, qx divided by a, and we don't need to redefine we, we don't need to rederive a because regardless of whether we use a uh, a vertical or horizontal differential element, whether we use a dx or a dy, we should arrive at the same uh, area for the shape.
that's just the area of the shape. Uh, this will vary, obviously, whether you, integral, when you, whether you integrate up or down, or the, the first moment of area will vary whether you integrate up or down, but the area is just area. And so then this is bh squared divided by 6. Uh, bh squared divided by 6 divided by bh uh, over 2. And by the same logic as last time, this would simply come to h over 2. So therefore, my overall x bar, y bar, um, the coordinates of my centroid, or sorry, not h over 2, h over 3. Therefore, the overall uh, coordinates of my centroid, my x bar, y bar, would be exactly what we would expect at, um, that would be b over 3, what we found previously, and in the y, h over 3. b over 3 and h over 3, uh, the exact formulas we've been using, now confirmed from base uh, formulas and principles. Okay. Uh, so that's the basic idea of how you apply these formulas. Now I might uh, show you how this works on something more complex, but really all of these for centroids are going to follow the same basic method. So for example, you know, we could look at something like a parabola or a parabolic spandrel, you know, even something more complex, like if we had a, a parabola and then a linear equation, a sort of a composite shape, and I asked you to find the centroid of this, all you would do is just construct a, you would construct a differential element, like if you wanted to find the x-chord in the centroid. You would use a dA to find your qx, and you'd have a dx here. And if, let's say this was like, uh, I don't know, 2y squared for on the parabola, and this was, I don't know, 1 half uh, x or something like that, you would have a height equal to 2y squared minus 1 half x. Or sorry, not 2, uh, not two I shouldn't say 2y squared, sorry, 2x squared y equals 2x squared, and y equals 1 half x or something. That would be the equation of the link, that would might be the equation of the linear, that might be the linear equation, uh, y equals 1 half x, and maybe y equals 2x squared is the, is the parabolic equation. And so you'd end up with a, um, a differential element dA here, like that, a dA. And the height of this would just be 2x squared minus one half x, or actually the other way around, top minus bottom, one half x minus two x squared. And then uh, you'd have you'd have to find where these intersect, for example. Uh, let's see where these would where would these intersect? Uh, one half x equals two x squared. Well we would end up with one quarter uh, one quarter x equals x squared. So one quarter equals x or just x equals one quarter, I suppose. Uh, if I divide both sides by, by if I divide both sides by, uh, well, I mean, just divide both sides by both sides by x essentially. So one half x equals that, and then the y coordinate would be uh, similar. So um, I guess that would be what that would be. Um, if I put a one, that would be one eighth uh, or one sixteenth, one eighth. Yes. So that would be one quarter comma one one eighth. And that would be relatively straightforward. So if I wanted to, so for again, this is just sort of another simple example that I'm just kind of sketching out here, where we had a more complex thing where we had a, for example, a parabola, the centroid of an area that you won't find on a table, in a simple formula table, where you maybe had a shape that's like a, made up of a parabola on the below and a linear equation above, this would go from zero, the origin, up to the intersection point, which you might have to solve for. And the qx would just, or the uh, qy, the first moment of area, would just be equal to the integral of x dA, and that would be the e equal to the integral of um, dA here, uh, would be 1 half x minus uh, 2x squared times dx. So then this would just be the integral of x dA, or x times 1 half x minus 2x squared, dx of course, and evaluated from zero to one quarter. And then you could get the a, uh, just doing the integral of the area. Area of two, The area of a shape is very simple, that's just the area between two curves. Again, this is basic calculus. So I don't know if I want to spend, if I, if I feel any time, I don't know if I feel uh, the need to spend a lot of time on this. Uh, centroids are fairly straightforward, once you, once you actually, or centroids by integration are really just an extension of the, a lot of the things you've seen before in calculus class. Um, I wanted to work through a, a few very basic ones, looking at both the centroids of rectangles and the centroids of triangles, uh, to derive some basic form, some of the basic formulas we've looked at. But really, most of these are fairly straightforward. 
um, you set up, you start by setting up your differential element, or really the hard part you have to do is set up your differential element, this dA, and solve for any bounds of integration. And then you sort of solve that you set up your integrals based on qy, based on your area, based on your qx. You work through them, apply the basic formulas, and really that is it. So while, especially for more complex shapes, the uh, hardest part can be uh, some hairy integration, uh, hopefully at this point in your education, your engineering education, um, working through the integrals that we'll see in, the, in a course like this really aren't too bad. So I think that'll cut it. I think that'll do it for uh, what I want to talk about in terms of basic centroids by integration. And then in lecture uh, 15, we are going to look at applying uh, applying pre-derived formulas to find the centroids of composite areas. So if you have any questions on this, please let me know. Um, if not, I think that'll do it for now. Please, again, please let me know if you have any questions. I hope this was illuminating and finding, uh, or at least looking at how you apply the formulas of centroids by integration. Please let me know if you have any questions either here uh, on uh, YouTube if you're not one of my current students, or if you are one of my current students, please email me at uh, university or through Canvas. Uh, but again, uh, I'll see you all uh, soon for lecture, I guess lecture, lecture 15, when we look at uh, centroids of composite areas. All right, Tanya Laird, I'm, uh, I'm Tanya Laird, that'll do it for now. Again, please let me know if you have any questions. I will see you soon for lecture 15, and as always, thank you.